Good morning to all of my fellow investors, traders, friends, colleagues out there. This is Lee Lowell, smartoptionseller.com. Today is Saturday, May 9th, 2020. Welcome to another edition of your Saturday Synopsis. What we like to do is look at the market, see what happened in the last week, and see what might be happening in the week forward. I hope everyone's doing well up there, out there. I hope everyone had a great week. Um, we know that businesses and economies are starting to open up again here, at least in the United States. People are starting to venture out. So we are sort of moving back to another different kind of new normal now. Um, things are changing. Hopefully things are changing for the better. The coronavirus is obviously still out there. Need to be careful. I hope, I hope everyone is still practicing safe distancing. We need to get through this thing. I know it's going to be uh, a rough few more months ahead, possibly longer. It's been rough for a while. We've all been sheltering in place, getting used to this thing. So uh, let's continue on. Let's try to beat this thing and get back to life as we once knew it. So what has happened in the market in the last week? Let's take a look at the charts. One thing we like to do is look at the charts. This is my chart of the SPY, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. And I've been showing this chart weekly to all of you out there obviously we know we had the major down move in february and part of march and the v-shaped bounce we've got an incredible bounce um, just on friday yesterday the u.s released the unemployment numbers for april uh, three million more people are added to the unemployment numbers now we have uh, over 30 million people in the u.s unemployed um that's a huge huge number the unemployment rate ticked up to 14.7 percent numbers we haven't seen in many 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 decades uh next month's probably going to be even worse thinking at least 20 percent unemployment so a lot of people are asking me lee how do we have so much unemployment how could the economy be so bad but yet the stock market is rallying why does that happen i'm sure some of you have been asking that questions maybe even reading articles about that in, in your favorite newspaper or, or online somewhere. It's, it's confusing to me as well, but, but the stock market is not the economy and the economy is not the stock market. These, they're two, they should be related, but they certainly are not because obviously you see how one's going up and the economy's going down. Why does that happen? Well, number one is that the stock market is a forward looking mechanism. Yeah. It looks out six to nine months in the future and and it always sees always the market always sees rosier times ahead so even when things were still bad down here the market started rallying. we made the low down here and that's when things were really getting bad and 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 the coronavirus was still on the upswing but yet the market found a bottom and started ticking up because it's looking it's looking forward right and it's looking to happier times and it's hard to get over the fact that unemployment is going up people are not going to be spending money companies are not going to be making money earnings are going to be bad so why would why would the stock market still go up and it's perplexing to some but but like i said the market is forward looking it's always looking to better times and it's projecting an image of of positive positivity so that's why people are buying up the market and that's how it happens the one thing you never want to do is fight the market, right? You never want to fight the trend of the market. And, and if the market is trending upwards, you got to respect the market. You know, I've been saying that over this past week that you need to trade what you see, not what you think. OK, I've been a little stubborn myself. I, I, it's hard for me to believe in this rally. I know with the unemployment numbers that it's hard to believe that the stock market can, can go up. And I've been a little stubborn myself. I've been trying to get short, a little bearish this market. At the same time, I've been telling you, I've been buying in little bits and pieces here, but for the overall market, I think it's going to move back down again. And it's hard for me to believe with all the unemployment that the stock market can continue to go up. So I'm trying to take my own advice here, which is to trade what you see, not what you think. And what I see right now is a market that wants to keep going up, right? We can draw some trend lines here, right? We see the market in this nice little uptrending channel here why do you want to fight that why do you want to get on the bearish side of that when the market's already telling you it wants to go up so what do we, what do we think is going to happen here well 
we've got the 200 day moving average right here and it's still ticking around that $300 level on the SPY. So I think the market is going to gun for this $300 level right here probably in the upcoming week. Um, probably be a nice resistance point. Maybe maybe it'll hold it, maybe it'll contain it or maybe it'll blast right through it, but that's that's the next level of uh, that the market will shoot for right at 300 pro probably next week so we can also look at the nasdaq um, the nasdaq composite holds all the major tech stocks now look at this little rally we have here um, the nasdaq actually has gone positive for the year right at the end of here's the beginning of 2020 right around here okay and the nasdaq popped above it this week so it's regained all the down move and it's gone positive for the year. The uh, Dow Jones Industrial, not as, not as strong as the NASDAQ. Uh, we've got a decent way to go. Here's where the Dow Jones closed yesterday. And here's where we, um, this is where we were at the beginning of the year up here. So the, the Dow's got a ways to go. The S&P 500 still has a little ways to go before rec reclaiming. Um, where we left off at the end of 2019, which was right around here, uh, around the 322 level. So we still got some room to move. But, but speaking of the NASDAQ, which has already reclaimed the highs, I mean, I'm sorry, has already um, gotten back into positive territory. You've got all those big names. You've got Facebook, Amazon, Google, Apple. These are strong, strong tech stocks, and they represent a huge part of the NASDAQ itself. So when those stocks power higher, the NASDAQ itself powers higher as well. So for those of you who've been playing in the NASDAQ, congratulations. Um, you're doing pretty well, which is good. So um, that's what I see for this week. Uh, I think the S&P 500 will challenge that $300 level. I've got some people asking me, Lee, how can I get on board? I want to buy some calls. Um, I want to sell some puts. I'm bullish on some stocks. You know, what, what can I do? Well, um, you know, in addition to the deep in the money call option strategy that I highly recommend for anyone who's bullish on the stock at, at their current levels, it's a great way to put up a lot less money than buying the stock itself. But we've also talked about or I've written about what's called the fence trade. Uh, I've, I've done some blog posts about it. I'll show you my blog here in a few minutes. Well, what is the what is the, the fence trade? And let's look at a look at a stock like Kroger. OK, Kroger. This is a stock of Kroger, and obviously you can see it's in a nice uptrend. You know, it's got this move up. You can connect the lines here. Okay, so it's in a nice uptrending channel, Kroger. And just mind you, is technical analysis. You know, people can do de technical analysis in lots of different ways. Technical analysis is looking at the charts, trying to see where what the charts are telling you. Obviously, we can see Kroger's in a nice uptrend. So if you're bullish on Kroger, and you want to take a little bit of a gamble. People tell me, Lee, I don't want to spend a lot of money. I want to buy some call options. You know, what can I do? I would also like to buy Kroger uh, at a lower level, which I tell you, you can sell put options. So you can combine the trades into what's called a fence, where you can buy an out of the money call option and sell an out of the money put option for even money. So you can get into the trade for free. Well, what does that look like if you do a fence? Well, Let's look at an option chain here and we can see how you can do that with Kroger. Now, this is a uh, option chain of Kroger and, and we're looking at the July 2020 expiration right here in the middle column. You can see this stands for July 2020 in the symbol column and on the left hand side are the call option and on the right side are the put options and these are the strike prices every dollar, dollar wide strike prices. So what you can do, if we're talking about the fence trade, what you want to do is buy you know, a slightly out of the money or an out of the money call option over here and you sell an out of the money put option, right? And you want to try to do it for even money, which means whatever you sell one for, it will offset the cost of buying the other. Now, in this case, if you're bullish, you're going to buy a call option, you're going to sell a put option. And Kroger's uh, last trade, $33 and change. You want to buy somewhat of a cheaper call option and you want to offset by offset that by selling a put option for the same price. So we look down the strikes here. Let's take a look at the, the $37 calls uh, last trade. 
60 cents bid, 67 offer. So somewhere in the middle, probably about 63, 64 cents, you can buy that option. If you want to offset that, you can sell an out of the money put option for roughly the same price. We're looking at the $29 puts over here, 62 cent bid, 70 cents offer. So probably around 65, 66 cents right in here. So you sell this one for 66 cents, the 29 put. You can buy the 37 call for you know 64 cents you got one offsetting the other even money no cost in the trade so now you're bullish by you're buying a call option you're bullish by selling a put option even money so if Kroger goes up you're gonna make money in both ways you're gonna make money on the call option and you're gonna make money on the put option right bullish strategies what happens if Kroger goes down what happens if Kroger starts to fall from $33 well obviously your call option is going to lose value the put option is going to go up in value but remember if you're bullish on Kroger and you're interested in buying Kroger at a lower price than where it currently trades then that's fine because then if Kroger ends up below $27 a share at expiration in July you will be assigned the shares and you'll buy yourself some shares of Kroger at $29 a share. I'm sorry, $29 is the strike. So if Kroger falls $4 from where it currently trades below $29, you will be assigned. You'll have to buy Kroger at $29 a share. If that's something that's fine with you, then you can go ahead and do that. Now, just remind you, this is not an actual trade, not a live recommendation, example only. So don't take this to heart, please, anybody. So it's just going to show you an example of what you can do if you're bullish on a stock, you're bullish on it right now, and you think it's going up right now. You can do a fence, which is selling the put op, an out of the money put option, and you're buying an out of the money call option. And if the stock moves in, in the direction you think, in this case, which is higher, you will make, you can make unlimited on Kroger as long as it goes up above $37 if you hold it until expiration. If it goes up right away, you can always get out of the trade. You can sell the call option for a profit. You can buy the $29 put option back for a profit. So you don't have to hold it until expiration. So this is a bullish type of trade. It's almost like a doubly bullish type of trade where you're buying calls, selling puts, and that's called a fence trade. And you can even go back to my blog back on November 15th, 2019. You can go to my blog, go to the website, smartoptionseller.com, click on blog, and it'll list all the, the blog posts that I've made. If you go back to November 15th, 2019, I, I discussed the second part of the Apple trade that we did with a fence, made a decent amount of money, and then you can go back to uh, click on here, previous blog post from June 2019, June 19th. That'll explain the whole uh, fence trade from start to finish. Take a look at those two blog posts. Also, for anyone else who has not downloaded our free Put Selling Basics guide, please click on the link here, Put Selling Basics and you will get a free download of our famous put selling guide uh, we love put selling that's what we do here at smartoptionseller.com if you want more information about our newsletters if you have questions you want to talk to somebody click on our services tab here we've got our newsletters and our one-on-one -on -one coaching that we can always talk to you about so that's it for me uh, this is lee lowell smartoptionseller.com hope everyone has a great weekend and a great next week Signing off.